Hey kid lovers, we're so glad that you are back. If you are new around here, we're in the middle of our unit of study on mini beasts. These are animals that don't have an internal skeleton or a backbone, otherwise known as invertebrates. And these online learning labs are part of our Spark series where we hope to spark a love of learning with your child. So today we're talking about spiders. They're not exactly cute and cuddly creatures, but they are actually fascinating to study. And I don't like to admit this, but they're great to have around too. Before we get started, I'm gonna mention two more books. I really like this one, it's called Wow, I Didn't Know That, Surprising Facts About Animals. And probably like you, you might have some curious kids at home that really love interesting, surprising facts. This is a great one. It's got lovely illustrations and it's just a fun read. I've mentioned this before, but this one called The Big Book of Bugs. There's a section on spiders. And I wanted to pull this one out again this week because it is so helpful to reference back some of the other mini beasts we've been talking about and to see them kind of all in one book. So we should talk about how insects and spiders are a bit different. Remember that insects have three parts to their bodies, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And they also have six legs, zero, two, or four wings. Spiders, or what are called arachnids, only have two part bodies. They have eight legs, six or eight eyes, and they have spinnerets, which are these small glands on their abdomen that produce silk. I wanna talk about spider webs for a minute. Spiders webs are so super interesting. They are marvels of engineering. They're beautiful and strong, but yet they're very fragile at the same time. Spider webs can be used for climbing, for building, for wrapping up the egg sacs, but many spiders also use their webs to trap their prey. Question, do all spiders spin webs? Hmm, that's a head scratcher. You might be surprised to find out that the majority actually don't. And probably the most famous non-web building spider is actually a tarantula. They wait and they ambush their prey and they use their sticky legs to capture it. Some spiders can even jump really high so they don't have any need for a spider web. Most spiders are actually good to have around. They eat a lot of insects like mosquitoes, help pollinate plants, and are a good source of food for fish and birds. But it is important to know that some spiders are harmful to humans. So always let an adult know if you see one and they'll help you identify it. There are two harmful spiders in the US you should probably know about and they're pretty easy to identify. The black widow and the brown recluse. The female black widow spider is black with a unique red hourglass shape on its abdomen. A recluse spider is light brown with a darker brown violin shape on its body. And that spider only has six eyes rather than eight, making it pretty unique. But back to spider webs. There are five types of spider webs I wanna talk about today. And if you're following along, there's a handy printable guide that I've made to help you see the differences. Orb webs are some of the most intricate and they radiate out a bit like spokes on a wheel. These spider webs are made by orb weaver spiders and they can get quite large, about five or six feet in length. That might be the size of you. They're so beautiful and I love spotting these outside. Sheet webs made by sheet web spiders are flat or sometimes even bowl shaped and they're made with these really dense packed in layers of silk. Cobwebs can refer to any abandoned cobweb but they're also webs made specifically by what we sometimes call house spiders. These are messy tangled webs and they might be found in the little nooks and crannies or corners of your house. This next shaped web is called a funnel shaped web. These are elaborate and strong webs made by funnel web spiders. They're flat with a funnel hole in the middle where the spider waits and catches its prey. Most funnel web spiders are poisonous, so this is definitely one to know. And lastly, we have triangle webs, named for their shape. They're not sticky like cobwebs or orb webs. The silk strands are covered with tiny fibers that help the spiders catch and smother their prey. Yikes. That brings us to our project today. We're gonna make a geo board. It's an easy, inexpensive project that's really fun to use over and over again and it's great for STEM learning. Geoboards are fun for preschoolers that are exploring shapes, developing fine motor skills, and spatial awareness. For older kids, geoboards are great for exploring geometry concepts, math sequencing, and even making art. You can try to use your geoboard for making letters, for numbers, for pictures, similar to how you would use tangrams. To go along with our study on spiders, I recommend exploring the five types of spider webs we talked about and trying to recreate them on your geo board. To do this project, you're gonna want a piece of wood, a ruler, nails, hammer, pencil, and rubber bands. 
I recommend making your geo board in a square shape using about a one inch or one and a half inch interval. First thing you'll want to do is to create the marks where you want your nails to go. I recommend spacing them out about one or one and a half inches apart. have to make one nearly as big. Mine was 12 by 12, so that was 144 nails. Woo. So I recommend printing out the spider web guide so that you can recreate them now on your geo board. Let's give it a try. enjoyed this project today. If you give it a try, be sure to tag us so we can see. For more resources, check out the description below. See you next time.